Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. And uh, thank you again for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Otherwise, I would just be talking to myself. So go ahead and get your Bible and turn with me to the 63rd Psalm. As we head into the weekend, I'm going to be starting a new psalm on Saturday, and I've told you before, I've looked at this one and thought, how can I break this apart? And I can't do it. So Psalm 63, we'll be picking up in verse 8 today. And again, this psalm is uh, David uh, crying out, uh, hungering and thirsting for God. And I think it's a great psalm. Uh, for you and I, a great example for us today uh, as David uh, is pouring out his heart and, uh, again, just pleading for uh, the very presence of God. Um, again, most likely, uh, again, was uh, probably... Um, uh, again, early in the, the, or in the time of uh, Absalom's rebellion, but uh, regardless of the circumstance, uh, David ha is, is just uh, pleading uh, to have a closer uh, relationship with the Lord. Um, again, go back and read those first seven verses if you weren't with us yesterday, uh, and you'll you'll see that. Um, and David just again he he pours out uh, his heart here. Uh, and makes it uh, very clear. He shares uh, with God his hunger uh, and his thirst for God. Uh, and now in verse 8, we're going to pick up there, and we're going to see David uh, committing to uh, to stay close to God. Um, that, that uh, I guess, is the, the simple way to put it. He starts out verse 8 by saying, My soul follow hard after thee. Uh, and so David is, is making a commitment here uh, not to get away from God uh, again, that he wants a close relationship with the Lord, and he wants that relationship to, to stay uh, close. And so uh, in the first seven verses, he really kind of uh, remembers and, and thinks back to the goodness of God and uh, determines, uh, remembers the, the faithfulness uh, of God. And because of that, uh, now David declares that uh, he is going to follow, follow hard, he says. Um, and uh, again, that, that simply means that he's going to, uh, to follow closely, uh, that he's going to stay with God. It's um, uh, again, it's uh, the same word that is used uh, to describe uh, a, a man's relationship to his wife, leaving his father uh, and mother and cleaving uh, to his wife. Or um, So it, it's a, a, a very close relationship uh, with God, and he explains why that is, and it's a good reminder for us. Uh, he says, I, I want to follow hard after you uh, because your right hand upholds me. Uh, he says, I know that you are the one who is taking care of me, uh, who is protecting me, who is uh, looking out for me. And so, therefore, I want to uh, stay close to God. Uh, I want to stay close to you. You've taken care of me, uh, again, in my, in my various conflicts and uh, struggles when I was a shepherd as the wild animals would come uh, and attack the flock. You've taken care of me uh, when uh, battling Goliath. Just on and on the list goes. And uh, he believes, um, you know, he's taking care of me uh, when Saul wanted me dead. And I believe you will uh, continue to protect me and to look after me, uh, even though uh, my son Absalom is uh, revolting uh, against me. In fact, uh, I think that statement, thy right hand upholdeth me, says uh, that David says, I know I can't win. I, I can't survive uh, this uh, rebellion uh, with, uh, without you. There, there, I, I have no uh, hope uh, of overcoming uh, this situation uh, without, uh, without the Lord's uh, help and without Him 
uh, taking care of me. Uh, and uh, I think the sooner that you and I realize that simple statement, uh, the better off we all will be uh, when we realize that our only hope, that our only, um, you know, our only safety, uh, our only strength, our only protection uh, is in God uh, himself. And he, uh, then in these last uh, two verses, three verses, uh, he goes on and says, but those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes, uh, but the king shall rejoice in God. Every one that sweareth by him shall glory, uh, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Uh, real quick, one thing. Notice uh, verse 11. He says, but the king shall rejoice in God. He's calling himself king. Uh, and again, so that tells us uh, that David was already on the throne uh, when he wrote this psalm. So it wasn't written uh, during uh, his uh, during Saul's pursuit of David, uh, because David wasn't uh, on the throne yet, um, so it um, has to be uh, Absalom uh, or, or some other event that we don't know about uh, that occurred while David was king. But uh, in these words, what uh, David is saying after declaring that he's going to follow hard uh, after God, he tells us why. Uh, he says because God uh, will take care of, of justice. God will uh, take care uh, of my enemies. God is righteous, uh, and he will execute justice. Those that seek to, uh, to destroy my soul, uh, he says, they'll go into the lower parts of the earth. They'll fall by the sword. There'll be a portion for uh, the foxes. And so uh, David says, I know, I believe uh, that God is going to uh, going to deliver me. He's going to do what is uh, he is going to do what is right. Uh, and this is um, borderline. Uh, we've talked about imprecatory psalms uh, before. This is uh, borderline when David says his enemies are going into the lower parts of the earth, fall by the sword, be a portion for the foxes. Um, and you know some people uh, struggle with that kind of language. You know how can a uh, a man of God pray for such a, uh, a violent um, ending uh, to his enemy. Well, we've, we've already talked about imprecatory psalms. Again, uh, we're looking at Old Testament language and uh, thinking in New Testament language. But, uh, I mean, David, David believes that's what's going to happen uh, to his enemies, those that are coming against him. Uh, David sees it as a uh, good versus evil battle. Uh, and that God will ultimately, uh, he will uh, judge evil, that he will take care uh, of his children uh, and those who are opposed and those who uh, go against his people uh, will ultimately uh, be uh, be judged. But the king himself, he, he's going to trust God. Uh, and so uh, David, uh, David, David makes a, a very clear uh, I think uh, <clears throat> statement uh, about how he thinks things are, his desire for relationship uh, for God, um, and what's going to happen to those who uh, who don't have a relationship with God. Uh, and you and I will find ourselves um, in in one of two places: when hardship and trouble comes, uh, when difficult times come, we will find ourselves like David in this psalm, uh, seeking God, thirsting for Him, longing for Him, as he says in the first verse. Or we will find find ourselves drifting away from God. Uh, those are the only two options. Hard times uh, draw us to God uh, or they uh, push us away uh, from God. Uh, and so this psalm is, uh, again, a reminder for us um, that, uh, you know, that, that some people, it would have been easy, uh, I suppose, for David to be, to be angry, uh, to, to have turned his back on God uh, because, uh, again, David, you know, first it was Saul, now it's his own son. Uh, uh, but David, in that time, declares, uh, I'm going to continue uh, to seek God. Uh, and so as we wrap up the 63rd Psalm, uh, let me encourage you uh, that, that we don't allow 
the circumstances and situations, the bad things that come in our life uh, to push us from God, uh, but they draw us to God. Um, and, and I'm not going to get this quote just right, but I, it sticks in my mind. I, I think about it uh, a lot of times. Um, someone, and I don't even remember who said it now, uh, said, but um, when, you know, said when difficult times come, uh, many men uh, fling away from God. Uh, he's, and, and he says, but what in the world do they fling to? Uh, and, and I think that's the question for us today. Uh, we either get closer to God or we leave God and get closer to who knows what. Uh, you know, how do we uh, explain that? And so uh, my, my prayer is that this psalm um, would become a, a, a real bedrock and uh, a real... Uh, a, a, a psalm you go back to on a regular basis uh, that, that you mark, stick a bookmark in here or something, that the 63rd psalm uh, is one that you'll uh, return to uh, time and time again. And remember those words of David, that even in, uh, again, about as bad a situation as you can imagine when his own son uh, has uh, rebelled and, and tried to take the throne, uh, in fact, does take the throne eventually, um, that David says, even in this situation, uh, I'm going to continue uh, to pursue my relationship uh, with my God. Uh, I'm going to hunger and thirst after him, uh, and I'm going to follow hard uh, after God. Uh, I hope that's your prayer this morning, that no matter what comes along, uh, no matter what you face, uh, that you are determined uh, to follow hard uh, after God. Uh, that you, you, you've you made up your mind that no matter what comes, and we live in, in as uh, the old phrase, perilous times, uh, no doubt, uh, that this is a time when we follow um, even closer and tighter to God than we ever have before. All right, I hope that helps you. Uh, I hope you will uh, make a commitment to hunger and thirst after him, to follow hard uh, after the Lord. And we'll see you back here uh, tomorrow morning. Have a great day.